This is the Stealth Cast. Let's do this. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the very first episode of the Stealth Cast. I'm your host, Nikki. Brand new podcast launching here, youtube.com slash Stealth Shampoo. Perhaps I'll move it over to other websites like Podbean, depending on how popular it is. But thank you all for joining me on the brand new pilot episode. Don't know how long it'll be. I'm aiming from anywhere 30 minutes to an hour. Let's see how long I can talk about things coherently and how much stuff I have to say. I'm not really going to have this on a set schedule because I don't want to do it and not have anything to talk about. So whenever I feel like it, I'm going to be launching a new episode, which is hopefully not super long in between episodes. I'm going to talk about stuff like news on this podcast, but I don't want it to be completely news because that falls out of relevancy pretty quickly. I want these to be a bit more timeless. So I'll kind of list things that have happened in my life, tell a few awesome stories and talk about just generally what affects me, mostly streaming. I do a lot of streaming. If you didn't know, I'm a Twitch streamer, twitch.tv slash shampoo. So spend a lot of my time on there, stream anywhere from eight to 12 hours a day. So I'll probably be talking a lot about that. Getting right into the action though, I wanted to talk about something that happened to my stream a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, something like that. If you're not familiar with Twitch, there's this thing called stream rating. And what that basically is, is you've been streaming eight to 12 hours, I'm super tired, and my audience isn't done watching. Some of them haven't completely been watching for the entire eight to 12 hours. And they're still eager to watch someone play some game and talk to them and stuff. So what a stream rate is, is when you're done, when you're tired, when you're ending your stream, you send all your viewers to someone else's stream and they'll hop in the chat, shout something like, for example, I'm Nikki from Stale Shampoo. So my people shout Stealth 101. That's kind of my, my stream motto. It's part of my stream culture. So they'll drop in the chat, shout Stealth 101. The streamer ideally will get a major boost and uh, they'll be thankful for it, you know? I've been stream rated quite a few times by this guy named Bunny, and my stream view count has gone up to 350 at max, which is pretty big for my channel. I'm rocking about 100 concurrent viewers, so the fact that I shot up to 350 at one point was just mind-boggling. And it's kind of like a pay-it-forward thing, you know? Sometimes people will want to, you know, finish their stream and they still have a bunch of viewers left over, they'll go and send those viewers somewhere and that person will send viewers somewhere. So it just gets everyone more of an audience to view um, or more of an audience to listen to them. And I think that's a really cool way to grow people's channels. It's also kind of a way to offer friendship or collaboration. You know, hey, maybe we play the same game. I'm going to send my viewers over there. Maybe you'll send viewers back. Maybe we can collaborate some way. You know, it's just generally a friendly thing to do. It's kind of an offering of friendship or peace or whatever is how I like to view it. So I've been stream rated a bunch of times before, and I really like it. And people just flood the chat um, saying whatever that the uh, other streamer told them to say. But this person didn't really quite like the fact that I sent a bunch of people over there. Actually, it's not even that person, because the person who was hosting the stream wasn't really reading the chat or anything. And I did watch her for about a few minutes before I sent my people over. She had really good production value. Um, her Mike sounded amazing, gameplay quality looked pretty good, so I felt like this might be a person worth sending my people to watch, so I'm going to send my people over there, and she didn't really have an opinion on it, she wasn't watching the chat, but her mods got really, really furious, just outraged. They started banning people left and right, and here's the thing, when you have a stream on Twitch, when you're a streamer, I feel like one of the main things... One of the main goals of being a Twitch streamer is to gain viewers. Am I right on that? Isn't that the point of being an online host is to gain an audience, maybe make some ad revenue off of it, get some sponsor sponsorships, make money off of it. But uh, that didn't seem to be the case in this person's chat. I guess, you know, some people just want to stream to show their friends, but it seemed like she had really good branding and she kind of had a business going around. And, you know, she probably wanted to be a Twitch partner. I don't know. If, she ever became a Twitch partner. I did. So that's cool. But 
Yeah, she uh, she didn't want the viewers, I guess. And what I'm trying to say here is you really can't change people's mind because the mods were arguing with the viewers. Hey, man, you're not supposed to come in here and spam. And I guess you can make a case for it being spam. There's a bunch of people popping in your chat yelling the same thing. I can see why you would take it as spam, but after those people all, it's their way of saying hi. After they're finished doing that, they might sit around and watch the content, or they might leave. Of course, there's always some sort of drop-off, especially if they're playing a different game and the viewers aren't interested in that. So, it's a spam at first. I can understand that. But afterwards, you know, they become part of the stream community if they like it. And... Not only that, but they also said, hey, you're advertising for the other streamer, which didn't make a lot of sense because they didn't even know who sent the people. And uh, that that made them really mad. So the moderators were like, it's in the Twitch rules. They pulled that out of their pocket too. It's in the Twitch rules. You need to ask before you stream raid. But part of the pleasure of stream raiding someone is seeing their reaction and seeing how grateful they are for it. I've stream raided a ton of people and everyone up to this point was super happy that I sent viewers over. Absolutely everyone. But it's just this one particular instance where they got kind of mad at it. And yes, it is in the Twitch rules. Ask before you stream raid. Again, it's like a surprise thing. People love to see their reaction. And it's kind of it's kind of a bullshit rule. Kind of like stopping at a stop sign. You know, if you go if you roll up to a stop sign, you're actually supposed to stop fully and wait for the car to rock back. No one actually does that. How many of you who are listening to this right now actually drive? How often do you actually stop at a stop sign and wait for your car to fully stop and rock back and then keep going? You know, it's just, it's a formality at best. No one actually does that. I guess you can ask before stream rating, but it's it's not a hostile thing. It's not, you know, go and hate on this person. It's, hey, I kind of like this person's stream. I watched her for a little bit. Go watch her now. And um, maybe eventually she'll pay it back. You know, I don't always expect them to pay it back, but that would be nice. Or pay it forward so that everyone grows. You know, it's collaboration, and that's one uh, way to help grow your stream. And I haven't really done a good job on that as a streamer. I don't really collaborate with a lot of other streamers, probably because I stream in a very small category playing The Last of Us. But in other YouTube Twitch news, this just hit today, PewDiePie turned off his comments. And let me see if I can bring up top YouTube channels. This is from statsheep.com. PewDiePie is slightly over 30 million subscribers. And to put that in perspective, the second place channel, YouTube's YouTube channel, is at 22 million. Smosh, you guys, I'm sure a lot of you guys know who Smosh is, 18 million. Jenna Marbles is 13 million. Nigahiga is at 12 million, 12 million. And I believe he was the first person ever to reach 1 million subscribers. So PewDiePie, who has over 30 million subscribers, is the biggest channel on YouTube, which I believe is the top, if not one of the three most top, uh, three top trafficked sites on the internet. PewDiePie turned off the comments in his YouTube video, and I can understand why. I've, I'm a person who works on the internet. It's a volatile place. It's a hurtful angry, rage-filled place where people have extreme opinions and there's a vocal, hateful minority that always leaves comments on their videos. And it's human nature to focus on the bad and not the good. You know, how many times do you remember getting a bad spawn in a video game versus how many times you got a good spawn? You never remember the good spawns. You always remember the bad ones. PewDiePie, being a human being, will remember and read the bad comments and, uh, Also, you're more inclined to comment if you hate the video. You know, how often do you watch a video? You know, you might drop a like. Are you going to leave a comment? Not all the time. There's a vocal, angry minority who are just filling the comment section of YouTube. And that Google Plus bullshit didn't do anything. All right, you got to attach your YouTube account to Google Plus. And, you know, that we all know now. That's just YouTube. Google pushing a failed social media service on us. But they covered it up saying, well, it's going to clean up the YouTube comment section. People are going to have to use their real names. How many fake celebrity, Jennifer Lawrence, 
Adolf Hitler. I don't know why I use those two examples. How many times have you seen them in the YouTube comment section? Ash Ketchum, I just saw earlier today. People aren't using their real names with Google+. And, you know, the thinking behind that is if they did use their real names, they might be a little less volatile. It's the internet. They're using anonymity to protect themselves so they can continue to say hurtful things to PewDiePie. I, and I understand a lot of people don't like PewDiePie. That's not your cup of tea. I personally highly, highly respect the guy for his, for his success. 30 million subscribers. That's nothing to scoff at. That man has built an empire. And whether or not his overreactive, crazy YouTube videos, gaming videos are for you, that's that's still a big number, and there's still a lot of people who appreciate his work. So, you know, PewDiePie might not be for you. Just don't watch him. Some people do enjoy him. I personally don't really watch many of his videos, except for he released a video talking about how he turned off his YouTube comments for forever. And that video started off, like, really silly and funny, but I could really relate to him where he was like, yeah, the YouTube comment section's gotten really volatile, and I'm just turning it off forever. If you want to talk to me, go on Twitter or, I believe, Reddit. And he shouldn't have to do that. There need to be some serious consequences for shit people do over the internet. PewDiePie should not have to turn off his YouTube comment section. But he did. And that's because of this vocal, angry minority who hates him, who are always leaving comments on his videos. And I'm just... The internet hate is real. The other week, this is kind of irrelevant at this point, and this is why I don't really want to talk too much about the news because it falls out of relevancy. But... White Boy 7th Street got swatted, and that's that's not a funny thing. A lot of YouTubers, have, a lot of Twitch streamers have been swatted. I've seen Twitch streamers swatted while they were streaming, and if you don't know what that is, that's when someone calls up um, someone's local SWAT team, they have the address of the YouTuber, and they say, hey, uh, this person is raping someone or murdering someone, or they have hostages, send a SWAT team immediately. And the SWAT team is really supposed to case the joint first before they blow the door open and start pointing guns at people yelling get down on the ground and all that fun stuff um, but the SWAT team are used as pawns in those instances and it goes back to this internet volatility and all that fun stuff I read an article the other day about how a bunch of game developers were banding together to stop the just overall people shitting on game developers being super angry about it there's a female game developer oh girls can't create games it's it's just there's so much hate going around the internet that I feel like I need three things. An unlimited amount of buckshot, a shotgun, and a teleporter. And I swear I would clean up the internet. Like PewDiePie, you know, if you don't like him, don't watch his content. You know, same, same goes for me. If you don't like this podcast, you think I'm full of shit, then you don't have to watch it. Why did I start a podcast? Speaking of which... You know, it's kind of easy to get in the podcasting business. Now I'm switching topics. All you need is a microphone, Audacity, or whatever recording software you like, and a computer, and you could hop on this thing. And I tend to emulate, I think a lot of YouTubers tend to emulate the videos that they like to watch. Like CNANners likes those short, to the point, funny videos. So he makes those short, to the point funny videos. I like listening to a lot of podcasts. Namely, I listen to a lot of the lefty show, Painkiller Already, and this has been in development for quite a while. I actually should have done this at the beginning of the show, but Lady Vanquish made this beautiful stealth cast graphic that you're staring at on screen right now, and I'm really making this podcast sort of listener-friendly. You know, I'm, I'm not putting anything on the screen for two reasons. Number one, it really, really reduces the uh, uh, render time on these. I only have to render out audio and a still image, so it'll help me very quickly get these episodes out, especially if they're really long. Rendering an hour, half an hour long video takes forever on top of my normal workload, uh, as well as you can listen to it in the car on your iPhone and hopefully not have to you know, feel like you need to be looking at the screen. You're going to miss me doing something funny with my face. And I could do it in my pajamas. I am wearing my pajamas right now. I don't have to dress up and look nice. Actually, no, I'm wearing a, if there are any ladies listening to my podcast, I have my hair gelled back and I'm wearing a suit and tie. And no, not really. But yeah, I really like this podcasting format. I feel like, 
YouTube commentaries, you know, the traditional, I'm going to get a 10 minute Call of Duty domination gameplay and then not talk about it and talk about something else. I feel like that's kind of fallen out of relevancy, at least for me. I would rather someone just sit down and vlog style it or podcast style. You know, I don't really need gameplay in the background. I'll sit down and, uh, I don't know, edit a video or browse Reddit as I'm listening to someone speak. So I don't know. I don't know if that's just fallen out of relevancy for me or if it's fallen out of relevancy for everyone. But I used to do the traditional, let's get some Assassin's Creed gameplay or let's get some Call of Duty gameplay and then not talk about it, and then talk about something else for eight to ten minutes. Whereas, you know, you can't really chain together topics like a podcast style, like who's going to watch 30 minutes of COD and have to get a bunch of games for that. And it's just much easier for me to get this blank still image and have this nice in your ear audio quality. I hope my audio quality is good enough. I bought a lot of audio equipment for this few hundred dollars of stuff. I got my Audio Technica AT2050 and I got a mixer over here. I believe this is the same microphone they use for the Rooster Teeth podcast so i hope my production is actually I, I probably can't beat rooster teeth i'm just some idiot on the internet talking into a microphone hoping someone's gonna listen and i'm planning on go going on with this show for at least a few episodes let's see how it'll go and maybe if it's really popular i'll put it on podbean from what i understand they have an app for you to use that you can uh you know search for podcast on there and listen to whatever you want so that'll be fun if you want to listen to it in the car you can already do it. Just go on YouTube. But if you want it on Podby, maybe I'll move it on there later. I'm just thinking out loud. Anyway, here's another thing that I wanted to talk about. Spend a lot of time playing games. I'm going to be talking a lot about games. Destiny is coming out on the 9th. It is September 3rd right now. September 9th, Destiny will be out. So I'm going to be playing a lot of that. Might talk about that on this podcast. I'm really, really excited for Evolve, which was pushed back to February that made me really sad, but I understand. Let's polish the game and not release a piece of crap, kind of like uh, <coughs> Battlefield 4. Uh, so hopefully Evolve is going to be awesome. I've played at least 24 hours of that in the alpha, and I tried it out at E3. That was a lot of fun. Looking forward to Dragon Age Inquisition. So I'll be talking a lot about games on this podcast. Not a lot of games coming out in the summer, in this September time. Of course, Destiny is coming out, but The Last of Us Remastered is the first game that I'm really playing on my PS4. I got my PS4 on launch. And it suffers from console launch syndrome. There's nothing to play on it. I've only played The Last of Us Remastered on my PS4. That's pretty much it. Anyway, I wanted to talk about, you know, games. A lot of what we're going to talk about on the podcast. News, stories from my life. Here's something that's really been bugging me lately. I'm, well, in college. And GEs are such an unbelievable fucking waste of time. I, I cannot even express how much... I hate going to some of my classes. I loved astronomy. That's one class that I really liked. But I've taken, let's see, a total of 12 different classes. And I found one of them even mildly helpful. And here's what really got me thinking about this. Every day, if I drive to school, a lot of times I take the train. But if I decide to drive to school to school because I don't want to deal with hobos and, you know, super crowded commute trains and all that fun stuff. I'll drive to school occasionally, you know, crank up the radio, listen to some music on the way and just relax. Every day when I drive to school, though, I have to pass up a cemetery and it just really opens my eyes to how much of a waste of time this is. And I understand why they have GEs, you know, it's because a lot of people don't know what they want to do at my age. I'm 19. Not a lot of people know what they want to be when they grow up. What is it? People change their major. I might be pulling this statistic out of my ass seven times before they actually settle on the major that they actually want to major in. I was lucky enough to figure out what I wanted to do when I was in eighth grade. How old was I? 12, 13? Uh, I always loved filmmaking and, well, radio, television. It's kind of, it's kind of broad, the things I like. Podcasting, filming, hosting a stream, you know, that production work uh, behind the scenes is something that I just found myself naturally good at. And I'm not, I'm not like, oh, I found out what I like to do. So I'm the best now. It's just, I got lucky. If I could pass up all these basic classes like geology, when am I ever going to use that? Is that, is that really something that I need to spend? I don't know, I'll make up a number, a hundred hours studying about maybe a few, you know, it's, it's important to know where America is. I don't know 
how many Americans can't point out America on a map. But if the number is more than one, American adults, if if the number of American adults who can't point out America on a map is more than one, that's already far too many. I'm talking about like, you know, mentally stable, um, intelligent human beings who have passed through school. Anyway, I understand why GEs are in place. They help people explore what they want to do. They give them more time to figure out what they want to do. But why do I, the guy who has everything pretty much already figured, I know what I want to do. I love this podcasting thing. When I started up my Twitch channel, I wasn't sure if I would liked it. It really stuck. When I started my YouTube channel, Four, almost five years ago, I wasn't sure if I liked it. It really stuck. You know, I pretty much figured out my field of work, hosting or doing some sort of editing work or, you know, podcasting. Let's see if I, I'm probably going to really like this. Pretty much, this is just like how I run my streams, except without the gameplay and chat interaction. So I've really figured out what I like. And if I could just pass through all the random, you know, I love, my philosophy class was another one that I liked, but economics that was kind of you know past the basic supply and demand stuff when am i ever going to use that statistics that was cool for the first three chapters you know understanding um statistically significant evidence understanding why some statistics are bullshit that's cool but you know the amount of time i spent in that class it, it went too in depth for the shit or here's a better example trigonometry geometry when am i going to be an architect never no, that's not something that I want to do, but GE still make it take statistics at my school. And what happened to high school? That's just babysitting. All the stuff you learn in high school is just babysitting. They keep you in class seven hours. They take attendance all because they want to keep you off the streets. This is something my English teacher told me that that really rings with me. Why is it that so many people leave high school not knowing what they want to do? Four years of your life you spent learning math, science, history, English, all that stuff. And how many, do the math, seven, um, let's see, how many days of school did I have? 180, I believe, school days? Seven hours a day for four years? Someone do the math for me. And how can you tell me after all that time, you don't have a clue entering college what you want to do? It's just babysitting. Uh, so I, I just wish I could get straight into my field of work because I show up to school every day I don't want to, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do the work, you know, tell me to get this done. I'll get this done. I'll get my passing grade and I'll move on. But I feel like it's just, it's a big waste of time when I could spend time developing other skills that I would use in the future. I'm a broadcast communication major. Why don't I spend that time not in geology and instead spend that time learning about audio or working on my podcast or working on growing my Twitch stream? I'm really, I'm really happy that I started my Twitch stream. It's, it hasn't even been a year, and I'm almost at 5,000 Twitch followers and 100,000 views. I feel like it would be a lot more worthwhile for me to invest my time in learning to host and um, garnering a bigger audience. I feel like that would look a lot cooler on a resume than I took geology. I learned basic GEs, and I don't know what kind of school you guys go to. I'm talking from an American perspective, but I can't take classes that will specialize me in my major until my last two years of college. It's just a it's just a huge waste of time. I understand from a student perspective too why it would be cool. Not only just because, you know, you have time to figure out what you're gonna do, but you're taking a bunch of super easy classes or at least hopefully your GEs are easy for you like mine. And you can spend a lot of time partying and socialize. That's what college is about. Partying and socializing and going out and having a good time. You're in the prime of your life. You're young. You well, have responsibilities, but you're not paying taxes, hopefully, unless your parents are just like, all right, go out. You know, I, I feel like not a lot of parents do that. But anyway, you know, college party. Yeah, let's do. I, I'm not really a party person. I've been to a few of them. That's not my thing. Maybe it's because I'm an introvert and you wouldn't really expect your favorite YouTubers and podcast hosts and Twitch streamers to be introverts. But that just means, you know, we spend a lot of time thinking to ourselves so we can put on good shows for you guys. That's not really for me. I don't, I don't like the atmosphere of being around 100, well, not even 100. I don't even think I've been to a party with like 200 people, but a few dozen people. You know, I don't really like that atmosphere. I'd rather have just a few of my closest friends sit around and we'll talk about how awesome Evolve is going to be. Actually, no, my friends are going to pick up Evolve. Uh, next gen consoles go on sale so my friends can pick them up. 
That's what I love about gaming is how social it can be. Here's another thing. Here's another thing I love about Twitch and YouTube. Uh, not only is it preparing for my future, preparing me for my future because I'm getting into a field that is hosting or, uh, you know, being a news anchor or working a camera or being a production assistant, working my way, working my way up to being a writer, something like that. It's also helping me develop social relationships. You know, college pushes you towards your your job, you know? College also pushes you towards uh, growing your social circles. I feel like Twitch is really doing that for me as well. Kind of in a different way, though. I really like Twitch because at college, you're meeting people, you know, from around your state. I've met a few people out of state who decided to go uh, come over to California and go to my college, but mostly, you know, people in your state. I've met a lot of people off Twitch from the UK when I stream at weird hours at 1 a.m. my time. Australia, I've met people from Norway. I've met people from all over the world except Antarctica. I don't, no one lives there except the scientists, I believe. Actually, there are people taking vacations to Antarctica, which is kind of, that's kind of stupid. What? Well, I'm not going to get off on that tangent. I've met a lot of people off of Twitch who are really cool. I've actually met some of them in real life. I went to E3 and I had four or five fans come up to me and be like, dude, you're Nikki. And that was, that was such a cool experience. Uh, I've met some of my mods in real life. And I really like how I get a bigger sample size of the human population in general from working on the internet. You know, I was going on earlier about how the internet's hurtful. And people leave mean comments, stuff like that. I'll ban their ass from my channel. That's why we don't deal with it. The cool people you do meet, though, you know, the people who will share their experience, older people, you know, I, I know some people who have kids and have different insights than me. I've spoken to those people on my Twitch channel. I've spoken to people who are police officers. And are you going to meet an aspiring police officer at a college party? At least I haven't. Or someone who's actually already a police officer, because I've met a bunch of those people. I've met people who work in hotels, pharmacies. You know, everywhere, a lot of different people. And I feel like that's growing my social circle a lot stronger than college would have. And the fact that I'm already doing what I'm planning on doing when I grow up is pushing me forward than college because college GEs are just complete bullshit and a waste of time. So basically what I'm saying is we need Freddie Wong's video game high school. I don't know if you guys have watched that web series, one of my favorite of all time, but it's basically there's... A bunch of kids going to the school and you major in your uh, game genre of choice and it revolves around this kid named Brian who is an FPS major and I think I major in that that's really that's really my strong point in gaming I feel like first person shooters the rest of the game category is kind of like MOBAs and I'm really good at rhythm games expert guitar hero man uh, stuff like that racing games not so much but I think I would major in FPS and I don't know maybe minor in rhythm games I think that'd be a really a really fun thing to do if you could, I was talking about this on my stream, if someone could develop a software that lumped games into genres, Battlefield, COD, The Last of Us, Crisis, those games would be in the shooter category. Guitar Hero, Rock Band, Osu, games like that would be in the rhythm category. And then you'd have Mario Kart, Gran Turismo, The Crew in the racing category. And somehow have some sort of accurate algorithm, Algor algorithms aren't perfect, but have some sort of algorithm that would make it so that it could determine how good you were at every genre of game and then make it so they rated you uh, on a scale of like 1 to 10, like you're in the top 10 percentile, you're 10 out of 10 at FPS, but maybe you're like 8 out of 10 in rhythm games and 2 out of 10 in racing games or like 6 out of 10 in fighting games, something like that. I think that would be pretty cool. Anyway, I guess I kind of described private school right there, but man, that's expensive. Man, call it. I just, right before I started doing this podcast, I spent like, 200 bucks on textbooks, which is absurd. Why, America, why can't we be like Europe and not screw our students over before they get into the workforce, you know, before they get their actual job? Can we maybe not make them go into incredible loans, go through incredible loans, get into some incredible debt to go through schooling so they can be a contributing member to society? Can we not make the cost of being a contributing member of society so high? That's what I'm asking for. I don't think that's too much to ask for, right? Yeah, I don't think so. Video game high school, though. I think they're coming out with season three pretty soon. 
I'm going to be watching that. I would recommend Nikki's recommendation. Maybe I should do this every week. I don't know. I would recommend watching that web series. It was really awesome. I think there are only two seasons out right now, and the third one is coming out soon. So if you have something, you know, if you have some time to fill after listening to this awesome podcast, maybe go check that out. In other news, America has a highly militarized police force who is highly irresponsible. I wanted to talk about this article that I found. I'll try to remember to link it down in the description that is absolutely hilarious and sad. How does a police department lose a Humvee? Here we go. Arkansas, a young man pretty much just GTA 5'd a police Humvee. And, and here's the thing that, that drives me crazy here. A Humvee, the Humvee, which this is straight from the article, the Humvee which the town of fewer than 700 people got for free through a controversial Pentagon program that gives old military equipment to local police departments doesn't have keys, but it's easy to look up how to start one. You're telling me, you're telling me, a town with fewer than 700 people needs a police with a Humvee, and those police are irresponsible enough to have the Humvee stolen. It's a it's a five thousand not five it's a five thousand yeah five thousand pound vehicle five ton armored vehicle you got that stolen from your police department you know what I say if I'm head of the Pentagon at that point first off I punch myself in the face for even thinking that our police need Humvees second off I'm like all right you guys don't get Humvees anymore because not only do you guys not know how to use the Humvees it got stolen by some kid who probably doesn't know how to run the Humvee either. Let me scroll down in the article really quick right here. Of course, they managed to find it and the thief had driven it into a tree and completely wrecked it. I'm hoping I'm hoping the thief did this on purpose, thinking these police really don't need this Humvee. Let me go destroy it. I'm glad he did that rather than getting on the gun on top of it and going on some murderous rampage. Let's see here. Um, let me scroll down here. There's a graph, which I find absolutely hilarious local police lose free military gear military gear these are the police there's there's no line anymore between police and military here here's the stuff the police have lost 21 pistols 11 m14s 14 m16s 10 shotguns and four humvees this isn't the first humvee that the mill oh excuse me the police have lost. They've lost four Humvees. Where are these just like parked on the street? They don't have these locked up. Why do they even have them in the first place? And now they're losing them. Let's see. Do do do. Let me scroll down the article right here. This is the paragraph that really gets me. But penalties for disappearing equipment are minimal. Police departments that lose assault rifles are not allowed to get any new gear from the po- uh, the program but are not required to return any equipment they already received. Uh, For example, Sheriff Joe, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm just going to call him Joe, can keep the 89 M16s he got through the program, even though his department was suspended in 2012 after he lost one of those rifles, along with nine Colt 45 handgun. You take away their... they can't keep track of these. You know, what? why? Why are you going to trust a police force with 89 M16s when they've already lost nine of their... Ha- no, take that shit away. They, we don't need Humvees, right? We don't... We, we need to stop militarizing the police. If not because a militarized police treats the citizens like shit, but because they can't even keep their toys on them... They're not responsible enough, and this is just showing it further. How do you lose a Humvee? All right, viewers, listeners, tell me down in the comments section of this YouTube video. I I don't think any of you own Humvees. If you do, include that in this number. How many cars have you lost in your life? How many vehicles have you owned or have your parents owned? Out of your friends, out of your circle of friends, I bet you guys have lost less vehicles than our police. Four Humvees is what they lost. Can you beat that? You and all your friends. 
and and please, if you guys have lost a car, tell me the story. But out of all my friends, none of us have lost any of our cars. I'm pretty sure, unless my friends aren't telling me something. And and provided, you know, if I lost my car, it wouldn't be as big of a deal. Because I don't have a fucking mounted machine gun at the top of my car. And I just scrolled down a bit, so... I, it's hard to read and talk at the same time. This is the paragraph. This is the paragraph that I really, really, really like. Losing a weapon or vehicle, even something as big and expensive as a Humvee, does not mean a police department will be automatically excluded from getting more free military equipment. That is straight from the article. You know what happened at my old high school when you lost your ID? The first time you got a replacement. The second time, you had to pay 10 bucks to get a new ID. And the third time, I believe there's some sort of other consequence. Why doesn't that apply to our police losing Humvees? Now, I understand, you know, if you're a normal civilian, you get your car stolen. That's unfortunate, you know. People can hotwire cars. There are bad people out there. They want to take apart your car and sell it. I understand that. You're the police. You're armed to the teeth, and you have no one guarding your armored vehicles. This this is insane. If the department report the equipment, this is, again, straight from the article. If the departments report the equipment missing within 24 hours, they can avoid suspension entirely. I don't think it'll take anyone 24 hours and one minute to notice, hey, our heavily armored vehicle with a mounted machine gun is missing from the parking lot. Um, let's go report that. Like, oh, wow. Wow, you guys know. Okay, here's another one. I, I kind of, this makes me want to join the police force and just go out and lose all of my weapons and just drive out a Humvee and be like, hey, hey, Sar Sergeant Bob, Sergeant Bob, hey, um, so uh, 23 hours ago, I lost my Humvee. Do you mind if I get a new one? Oh, yeah, sure, Sergeant Nicky. Go ahead. Here's a new Humvee. Why? I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. We, yeah, you have a lot of money to throw away, but when you lose something that lethal, dangerous, why are you getting new ones for free is my question. You, you know, one time in class, I forgot my backpack. My backpack's pretty big. You know, I'm going to estimate it's five pounds. It's it's a notable object that if you didn't have on you, you would notice it was gone. Unlike your cell phone, you know, you forget your cell phone. It's not like, oh, wow, there's a lot of weight gone from my body. Where did, you know, no, it's a cell phone. You, you can you can misplace those. Understandable. Maybe even you can make that case, make it a stretch for your handgun. Now, your handgun's kind of important, but I can see, yeah, your handgun's kind of small. You know, you misplace that, whatever. I'm not giving police a pass for misplacing their Colts, but let, let's just, let's be a little generous here. All right. My backpack though. Oh shit, dude. There's not a lot of like five pounds on my show. Oh, I'm missing my backpack. Let me go back and grab that. Here, here we go back to the article. Let's see. The police department in Mississippi signed a corrective action plan to lift a suspension. Uh, this is a letter promising to keep tighter control over its lone weapons last March after it lost four M14 assault rifles. I don't know if you know how big an M14 is. I actually have an airsoft one uh, sitting right over there. Actually, it's, a, it's an M4. I have an airsoft M4 back there. Different weapons, yeah, but work with me here. If I was out playing airsoft and I didn't have my M4 on me, I'd be, wait, wait a minute. All right, uh, not, no, yeah. Oh, shit. I dropped my M4. Let me, let me go retrace my steps and try to go find that. That thing's important and that's kind of expensive. Let me go grab my M4. You know, these police are losing M14s. Multiple, not just one. One, it's like, all right, all right, Sergeant Bob, you lost one M14, all right? No, guys, everyone, everyone, Sergeant Bob lost his M14. This is a big deal. We will have no more lost M14. They lost four of those. This is one police department in Mississippi. And they, they don't just disappear. Well, some, some little kid on the street picks it up, and great, now the little kid's got an M14. I don't know how they lose these things. What, are they breaching and clearing a house? You know, they stick it against the door frame and, and just like, oh, all right, there's, there's no one here. Bye. And they just left their M14 there. I don't know. Are police really carrying that much? They got their taser. They got their, I don't know what police carry. 
But I feel like if something like an M14 were missing from your body, you would notice. Unlike your phone. Your phone, you, people lose those all the time. Your sunglasses, I've lost quite a few of those. I've played Airsoft a few times. And uh, pistol's not on my hip. Oh, crap. Oh, it's over. The, I, it fell out of the holster. And I bought a better holster. I have this nice Kydak holster for my KWA M93R. And it is awesome. I love it. Probably talk about Airsoft on the stream a little bit if I ever go play another another round. I don't really like... Summer Airsoft sucks. It's like really... It's hot outside. Get all sweaty. I don't have the best cardio ever. I really should go play Airsoft again. But for, the, for those of you listening who play airsoft do you go by yourself or do you have a squad because my friends aren't really trained they're not really good at airsoft and they're not always available so usually i have to end up going by myself and just teaming up with whoever's there is that do you find that to be effective are a lot of fields in your area friendly do you live in california also and can you recommend any fields or do you always bring your squad i don't really have a squad a lot of people who play airsoft are police officers military veterans oh man the first time i played airsoft i was going up against some some guys straight from iraq just got back they were a bit better than me anyway let's close out the show let's close this first episode of stealth cast out oh yeah listen to those kyle guitar riffs looks like a first good pilot episode of the stealth cast don't forget to join me next time subscribe here on stealth shampoo i want to close it out with this quote from obama he said this last month there is a big difference between our military and local law enforcement and we don't want those lines blurred yeah you're doing a, you're doing a good job on that obama i'm not you know i don't just blindly hate on the guy i like him some of the things he does don't like some of the other stuff he does Whatever. Anyway, be sure to subscribe here on YouTube for more StealthCast. Join me for my live streams, twitch.tv slash StealthShampoo. All these links will be down below the video player in the description. Also, check me out on Twitter at StealthShampoo for up-to-minute updates on the ingredients of the burrito I am eating for lunch. Thank you all for coming. I've been your host, Nikki. Follow me on all my social medias. Facebook, also linked down there. Subscribe on YouTube. Once again, thank you to Kyle and my lady friend, Bree, for making these lovely graphics. And I'll see you all some other time. Small children!